compared to the uh, young, naive agent in the born identity, in this movie, Nikki is a completely a different woman, right? Uh, how do you work in order to compose this character piece by piece all over the movies and, uh, and the years? Well, part of it, Nikki's evolution was organic just because we, the span of these films, like we made Born Identity when I was 19, and I remember saying to Doug Lyman, like, I'm too young to be in the CIA. Um, you know, and then fast forward, here we are four movies later, of course she's gonna have to have grown and changed. Um, but when I first got the script, or when I first found out we were gonna make another Bourne movie, uh, Paul and I would exchange emails about what to do with Nikki's character, and I was really excited because he seemed to really want to have her be the catalyst for the story, but also the one who sort of represents the struggle that all the main characters are going through, which is that they are disillusioned with the agency that they devoted their lives to, and Nikki is has nothing to lose because she has been in hiding, that she is actually acting out and wants to leak all this information about them. So the idea that she was that kind of volatile was exciting to me. Is there anything in uh, Nikki's character in which you can in some way relate your own personality? Um, you know, the stakes for the people in this movie are a lot higher, but I do think that one thing I latched onto in doing research for Nikki was like, her ideology and what makes her tick. So um, the idea that she, uh, the questions that are brought up are, you know, at what point do you, how much do you criticize your government and how much do you have faith that they're acting on the best interest of their citizens? And so, I don't know, that was something that I could, that I could focus on to kind of understand what this girl's fighting for. Just like the previous movies, also Jason Bourne in some way deals with our contemporary, with our nowadays. Is there a message you would like the audience will grab watching this movie? Well, I hope that, that audiences think about the world that we live in now. Um, I think there are questions of privacy and security that come up in the movie, but then, as I said, I think the biggest issue that all the main characters um, are, are, are dealing with is, is this idea of how much to question the authorities. Um, and that applies to people all over the world, I think. Paul Greengrass, has, has, I think he has a very specific uh, style in order to edit and to shoot in movies like this. In what on the set is different from all the other directors you worked with in your career? Paul is constantly coming up with better ideas. So um, as an actress, it's very challenging because you have to be memorizing lines at the very last minute. Um, and in the midst of like a scene with 600 extras and lots of violence and you know uh, uh, a very large in scope that takes a lot to organize, you do not want to be the person to mess that up. But Paul um, comes from a documentary film background, so he even in, with a big action movie, he will set up 180 degrees of reality and and point his cameras in you know all over the place. So. Um, as opposed to the traditional way of shooting something, which is just close-ups of the two people who are talking. Talking about the war born franchise, which has been for you the most challenging scene to shoot, not only in a physical way, but I would say maybe more in, a, in an emotional way. Um, Tricky question, sorry. Am I, no, 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 it's good, I just don't want to give anything away, but there's a scene where she, she's, uh, Nikki's injured, and um, having to play the impact of that kind of major injury was hard for me. I mean, I like looked up, I googled, you know, uh, what happens like when somebody is bleeding internally and how they're, they have trouble breathing, and so to mimic a physical problem was harder for me than any sort of emotional thing.